Good evening and welcome everybody. My name is Omar Khulef and I am the curator of this year's forum titled Continental Drift. And for those of you joining us um, for the Q&A, I'm delighted to be joined by the filmmaker Tamer Saeed and um, the star of the film that which we, we just screened, uh, Khaled Abdullah, and also the film, one of the film's producers. But before I uh, venture into those introductions, this is the last event of the One Five Forum, which has been an incredibly enriching and edifying experience uh, for me as a practitioner and, a, and as someone trying to think through the challenges that we are facing as creative individuals working across the continent and its di diaspora. And I just wanted to go back to the very beginning of this notion of the drift, which, which was the, the theme for the forum, which was to think about uh, what does it mean to create structures in a moment that is completely interstitial? How do we choreograph things through and with and in different temporalities in order to accommodate the variety of voices that exist within our sphere or who may be seemingly distanced because of the social, political, public health context, whatever it may be. And so what we've felt here in these days is a true and genuine expression of how lyric and poetry, song, and the informal dissonance and resonances that come through staged and informal conversations create forms of solidarity and potentially even new meaning. Now, I chose this specific film in the last days of the city to end the forum for very personal reasons. And those reasons have to do with what does it mean to belong or be in a place or have a place so etched in one's mind that you yourself feel so disconnected from, a place that you belong to supposedly, but which offers you no sense of salvation, no welcome. And I wanted to just read a short poem by Joyce Mansour, who is a Egyptian British poet who uh, was Jewish, who joined the Surrealist movement in France I have an incredible out of print book by her, but I couldn't find it today. So this is what I found and I, I'll read it now. So it's called Blue Like a Desert, which of course for anyone who's attended the, the, the other events would understand that there are lots of resonances with this title. Blue Like a Desert, happy are the solitary ones those who sow the sky in the avid sand, those who seek the living under the skirts of the wind, those who run panting after an evaporated dream, for they are the salt of the earth. Happy are the lookouts over the ocean of the desert, those who pursue the fennec beyond the mirage, the winged sun loses its feathers on the horizon. The eternal summer laughs at the wet grave. And if a loud cry resounds in the bedridden rocks, no one hears it. No one. The desert always hollers under an impassive sky. The fixed eye hovers alone like the eagle at daybreak. Death swallows the dew. The snake smothers the rat. The nomad under his tent listens to the time screeching. On the gravel of insomnia, everything is there, waiting for a word already stated elsewhere. And of course, the word elsewhere as, as, as an ending was for me evocative in this, in this incredible film that I believe is really about being in a place, but also always being elsewhere. So I want to introduce 
formerly now um, our, 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 two, our two guests. Um, Tamer Said was Tamer Said was born in 1972 in Cairo. He is a filmmaker and producer who lives between Berlin and, and Egypt. He studied filmmaking and journalism and began his career in documentary cinema. In the Last Days of the City is his first feature fiction film. And it premiered at the Berlinale at the Berlin Film Festival, where it won the Caligari Film Prize and was screened at over 160 festivals worldwide, winning 15 prizes. Temer also founded Zero Production in 2007 to produce independent films supporting different voices um, to enter into uh, what is often deemed a, a rather, um, let's say, hermetic canonical space. Uh, also a co-founding member of Mosserin and Collective and Cimatec, uh, an alternative cinema space in Cairo. He also teaches film internationally. Khaled Abdullah was born in Glasgow, Scotland in 1981 and does not have a Scottish accent or a Glaswegian accent. He is a filmmaker, writer, and actor, and um, perhaps for many most known as the star of the film The Kite Runner, an adaptation, at which point he, um, I remember him informing a Guardian journalist that he, he, to quote him, he had said, I didn't have the right to play Arab roles unless I had lived the struggle. I'm not entirely sure how I met Khaled or how I know Khaled, but I also am an Egyptian, sorry, Khaled is of Egyptian heritage, Egyptian parentage. Um, I also was born, I was born in Egypt, in Cairo, like Tamer, but three, three months old, ventured into Glasgow, Scotland at my parents' whim, and at the same time that Khaled would have been born. However, his family, probably chose not to attend my father's Scottish Egyptian society, which he had created. So we didn't meet till a long time later. And I was incredibly fascinated by this individual who was playing these roles um, in um, Hollywood or mainstream films, uh, who was constantly speaking publicly and critically about what it meant to personify or play or push against particular stereotypes. And somehow we met. And since then, I believe that he is our salvation um, in terms of uh, representation in, in this very um, specific, the neutered world that is the world of cinema and, and television and visual, a specific visual culture. Um, I'll stop rambling at this stage and begin and just say that uh, I found out about in the last days of the city through Khaled's um, narration of the making of it, which was there were seemingly lots of stops and starts. And I wanted to ask you, Tamer, if we could begin about the genesis of this film and the conversations that first led to its um, formation, if you will. Tamar. Uh, yeah, that was, yeah, thank you, Omar, and I'm very happy to be with you and Khaled in this conversation, uh, especially that I didn't, um, unfortunately, I didn't see Khaled since a long time, so uh, it's beautiful to be, be together again uh, on this conversation. Um, yeah, that was a long time ago. I think it was many things. You know, at that time, I'm trying to uh, retrace this period when I started to, um, to, to work on this film. And I always say, like, um, you know, I always feel like that every every film starts with questions. 
So, you know, you make a film when you, when you have questions that you feel this urgency, like these, when these questions keep hammering your head and you, you feel like there is an urge that pushes you to, to go further and further and, and explore these questions more, hoping that this will kind of settle you down, but actually these questions leads to others and others leads to others and etc. Um, so maybe I can I can remember some of these questions that were kind of provoking me. Like um, one question is: Is it possible at all to 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 tell or to, or, or to narrate? How do I feel towards Cairo in a film? How can we, uh, you know, a film is, is only two hours and, but the city is too huge. Is it possible to make a film that carry all, all the layers and, and, and carry all the depth of the city the way we feel without, without kind of, um, uh, uh, stereotype things without like just uh, 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 um, uh, take out the complexity of the city structure out of this film. Is it possible to 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 express how do we feel towards this huge structure of a city? Um, in a film, um, is it possible to film Cairo the way I see it? Like you know, I I don't I, I've never I, I, I'm always frustrated of how like there is something there's there is there is a way of trying to capture the soul of Cairo in a film, and I'm always frustrated of to know how to do this and how to to capture this mix of roughness and kindness in a way in a film um also back to these days like towards the um, in 2005 6 7 8 9 like it was also clear that we 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 can't continue uh like that and, and and there's something huge is coming and and i wanted to capture this feeling of like living in in this era when uh living in this era when you feel something huge is coming and it's a kind of a turning point in history and you have this mixed feelings towards what's coming at that time i didn't know that what will happen after but it was like this uh, complexity and range of feelings including fear hope um, longing for something while being scared of it at the same time all these mixed feelings and and i wanted to capture this in, in, in a cinematic way like to find the, the cinematic language that capture this using sound and image. I don't know if this makes any answer to your question, but yeah. No, it does. In a sense, what, it, what you're saying is something that I feel is that there's a longing. There's a sense of like wanting to encapsulate the impossible, but in a sense, what you've done is you've turned to the cinematic process of almost journaling through by positioning this film also in the past, also, I think is what, and using certain biographical details from your life, it, it kind of anchors, it anchors a, a Cairo or an Egypt that is really in between the present and the past. That's kind of almost limp, if you, if you will. And that feeling is something that I certainly felt every time, you know, the times that I watched it. 
but I'm also interested in your relationship, both of you. And I wonder if Khaled could say something about that is when did you two meet Khaled into and start talking? You're also a producer on the film as well as the, the, the main, the main character through who, through whom we see most of these um, feelings, if you will. How, how did that conversation kind of develop and when did it develop? Um, we met, uh, first of all, thank you for all of this. And it was very nice to be with you three. It's a, it's a special meeting for me. Um, but uh, yeah, we, our first contact, I think was in 2007. Um, and we met at the very end, no, very beginning of 2008, um, actually in Waterloo Station. Um, but the first meeting, I don't know, actually, it's, it's kind of worth telling this stuff because it's, it, it's part of it. Um, that trip I went, because we were talking about this, the sense of belonging and not belonging, but it was a trip in which I went to Cairo and I was really depressed. Um, I was very sad because I had started to, my relationship really, I was born in the UK, brought up in the UK, but always had a relationship with Egypt, a very strong one through my family. My father and grandfather were political prisoners and part of that intellectual left diaspora, like that's, that's where I come from. Um, but my relationship with Egypt started to become nostalgic, essentially. It started to become a place where I went and visited and saw family and uh, didn't really have any friends. And we're starting to feel like I was losing a sense of why to go and why to be there. And it was my sister, who was seven years younger than me, um, who happened to be there, I think on her gap year or something like that. We had a group of friends, uh, one of whom uh, had just started working with Tim. Uh, who was trying to cast the lead role in this film. And at the time I just finished The Kite Runner and I was going into my next project. And also uh, my relationship with Egyptian cinema was one that I was hoping might exist at some point, but I wasn't sure would because of the nature of what had happened to Egyptian cinema. And so this was like right at the beginning of it, just beginning to shift. And I remember reading the script and suddenly when it was sent to me, realizing that there was something very different here in heart, soul, intention, relationship with, with everything and with me. <laughs> and uh, we had a conversation and I couldn't do the film at the time because at the time originally the idea was to uh, shoot the film in three months or something like that. <laughs> in the winter of 2007 and uh, that didn't happen luckily and uh, and then I got involved with the film but through the film and really on my first trip over really to Cairo to zero production when I entered it when it literally it just it had it had walls and it had I think no chairs and two desks and we sat on the floor. And I entered the world, for me, of, my, of, of, of the ghost of me. I suddenly became part of the community of people who were a version of who I might have been had I grown up in Egypt. I suddenly became part of the community of filmmakers who, had I grown up in Egypt, I would have, I, 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 you know, they were my people, they were my ghosts, they were my brethren, they were my cousins, they were all of that. And um, yeah, the film, the journey to make it, uh, there's a sort of phrase that I, I use sometimes, which is that pretty much everyone in the film plays a version of themselves, except me. Um, I, and this is very much how I see it, I played a version of who I would become. Mm. It's a very strange thing to act a role to have a role for two and a half years. It took us two and a half years to shoot that film. 
and 10 years to make it, more or less. Um, and uh, for me, the, in a strange way, I'm, I'm also always caught between the actor side of me and the producer side of me in terms of, in terms of it, because it was a film that we had to make with every part of it. Had, had we not given it everything, by which I don't mean, you know, you give everything to a role. I mean, I mean, we lived for this film. This film lived through us. It broke the way that we live. Uh, and not just us, us and people from Iraq and Lebanon and, you know, and all those different parts of the film. Um, and yeah, a phrase I often say is that we, we you know, in terms of traditional filmmaking, we did everything wrong, which is possibly the only thing we did right. Maybe you could both reflect on why that the film became such a part of your life, because yes, 10 years, you know, it's a different world, right? And there are scenes in there that very explicitly reference the, a, a huge shift that happened in the, in the middle of those 10 years. Um, but you both were in some way or another um, involved as spokespeople, filmmakers, documentarians, interlocutors around the Egyptian revolution of 2011 as it continued on to whatever it became. I have no language for that. And is that is that a reason why the film was shifting, changing, and such a part of your lived experience, both of you. This is a question for both of you. You could answer first because you- I mean, for me, I mean, I mean, for me, I, I, I mean, undoubtedly. I mean, we, we finished filming six weeks before the revolution began, mm. uh, as it happened. Uh, and, uh, you know, it, it, it became a film made with a, with a kind of foresight and edited with a kind of hindsight. Mm. And we, through the process and, and through the process of making it, I mean, and, and it's still the case to this day, uh, because of that peculiar kind of positioning between past, present and future. Uh, and it, I think, as a kind of document of witness it, it witnessed Cairo and it witnessed the region in a very particular way that you that could only have been as we did documentary but somewhere also fiction that it also that it, it's constantly it, it's constantly being ghosted by how Cairo is changing and how it's not changing by how the region is changing and how it's not changing and then also this particular kind of position, I feel, of Khalid in the film. For me, I, the, more I, the more I kind of live in the world that we're living in now, the more I feel he's, you know, a, a part of all of this, right? He lives in this position of kind of witnessing the size of what's going on around, but somehow not being able to intervene as he might wish he, he, he could. And uh, which is also one of the things I think makes him very like a, a difficult character in film and plot and, and all sorts of things because of that position between this passive and active, you know. Um, but the film became also a kind of responsibility, you know. I mean, we filmed a very special period in the history of our country, of our region. Uh, I don't know how many hours of footage we had in the end. It's a film that was written in the edit, which is not generally how fiction films are made so much, you know. It was more, I'd say the production side of it is more like you do a documentary film. So it's a real hybrid in that sense as well. So in short answer, there's a production related reason for some of the length, but there's also the complexity of, of what it became. And I would say that in a way, the film could only be complete when it did, which was around 2015-16, when Egypt was, Cairo, Egypt was beginning to settle into some form of what we're living now, but even 
all of the footage to figure itself. But I don't know. That's my. Tamara, can you come in on this as well? Because I think it's also about reflecting on, the, I mean, for me, it, it has this hybrid quality too. I can see this documentary sensibility, but it's totally not that either. And I, reflecting on the film, Tamara, I mean, how do you feel about these things that Khaled is saying? Can you comment on it? Yeah, I mean, you know, of course, like, I believe everyone, um, every one has, like, I think all, uh, everything Khaled mentioned is, um, is, is also expressing in a way or another, like this journey. And of course, but each of us kind of depending on what was our position towards the film and towards what's going on around us, you know, the weight of each element is changing uh, alongside this, uh, this long journey. In a way, I, I think like, yes, of course, um, I think, the big, the big, I mean, for me, I felt we were very fast. You know, everybody is thinking, I think 10 years was, uh, was too, uh, was too quick because it's not about making the film. You know, when you make a film, any film, you need a machine behind you. You don't make a film by yourself. You need a machine that is supporting the making of this film. And if you don't have this machine, then you need to find it. In our case, we needed to build the machine itself. And, and building a machine to make a film that is um, using this particular language of mixing fiction and documentary at the same time, like using the city as a backdrop, bringing actors to, 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 to film inside uh, inside, in, inside this backdrop and, 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 and try to capture uh, um, the, something that we, from our perspective, is magical about the city wasn't an easy infrastructure to build, wasn't an easy machine to build. And I would say, you know, over this 10 years, I was working as a filmmaker for very few days. And the rest of this 10 years were just to make this few days possible. And, and this is, of course, a key element in, in, you know, in the end, I would say I was very lucky. I, I had the best crew and cast I, I can dream of. You know, working with Khaled is, 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 is very special. I, I had the right uh, partners who carried this film with me and, of course, Khaled, and but also uh, Basim, my DOP, uh, Haider, and 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 Basim Hajjar, the and and all the other actors like the the the, uh, the 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 crew of the film, and these people, they uh, committed their 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 lives and 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 and, and themselves to. To the to the to what the film needed, and of course, like it wasn't an easy thing to also find the budget to secure the budget to be able to make the film the way we wanted. Especially that you know, following 2011, it was very difficult to convince donors. To, to finance a film that is not talking about Tahrir Square directly. That is, you know, that is trying to trace the, 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 the roots of what happened, but it's not directly filming what's going on, on time. So it was, that, that was another challenge. You know, every time we speak to, we speak, we spoke to someone, he's saying, yeah, but can't we do something about what's going on now? 
And we felt this is not our film. Our film is about the moment before, not about this moment in particular. Um, yes, so it was basically, and I want also to add to this, and this is something that me and Khaled went through also together, that during this 10 years, we, we built Cimatec, which is a huge, another, another huge infrastructure that took uh, a lot of our time and, and, and effort during these years. I mean, the film, just to add here, I mean, the film wars mm -hmm. itself, like... I was just gonna add that, I mean, the film wars an encounter with the infrastructure of storytelling that underlies our image, that underlies our heritage. And the film was on one side a response in terms of the image, in terms of the work that we did together to produce the film, but it became that in turn, in terms of infrastructure, in terms of actually building the production company, in terms of building Cimatec, in terms of then for me, for us in different ways, subsequently responding post 2011 with Musarine and with other things. It became a form of, you know, like, how do we, and this is still a question that remains open, problematic, how do we create the kinds of films, tell the kinds of stories, fund the kinds of stories that, that our region deserves as part of, on the one side, witnessing itself, and on the other, hopefully, producing its future. You know? on, on that note for just a second, this is an infrastructural question. I mean, the way I see it is that you guys chose, uh, or you people, I guess, because there's more than just you, you people chose to build out these things. And in a way, the film is like the central node, this connective tissue, this baby in the middle. But I want to think about other, the other, other voices also in not only Egypt, but in the rest of the so-called region, voices that want to come out with expressions of a cinema that is that is different. And as we know, Egyptian cinema, it, 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 it's, been a, it's been a very up and down ride, and especially in the last 20 years. So what, what, what are the avenues and the spaces that people can, can, can do, because can use, because you created solid a solidarity kind of movement around around a production company a, an alternative cinema the film all of these people congregating and constellating and what about the, the next generation everyone says it's going to happen online is but i'm not so into, i'm not entirely sure about that especially in the case of egypt which has one of the largest and oldest cinemas in, in the world in terms of output of production so what what do you, uh, what do you think as people who you know work in production and are trying to support these voices yeah i mean i mean first of all i would like to say that we um in a way um, um it's very important also to mention that it wasn't only me and Khaled. me and Khaled were just part of a of a big team of building Cimatec or making the film and we and um, like everybody like give the maximum they they everyone could to 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 achieve these things so we I would say it's a it's a it's a it's a much bigger community than only me and Hel. Um, especially with Cimatec. I also think in a way uh, we um, of course like you know still like um, um, I think the key question that is uh, 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 facing every filmmaker today is a question about the production model that he or she is using in their film. When I'm talking about the production model, I mean how they are going to make decisions about their work, Wh what kind of structure they are, they are like this machine behind the film, um, like how they make this decisions, how they choose their cast, how they choose their language, how they, you know, are they, 
what kind of freedom they, they secure, can they protect their project and their freedom of, uh, or not? And, you know, there are uh, so big challenges that are facing every filmmaker today. In a way, I think big part of what we are trying to do is to, to explore our way in doing these things without having any reference. And one thing we, uh, I'm sure we at least is important today is to be able to create these references for people that they can criticize and, and reject or accept or go into, uh, um, um, you know, to, 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 to create a conversation about uh, how can we continue and find new ways of producing films, of, sh of sharing films, of dealing with the archive, of building uh, uh, new facilities, etc., etc. And in a way, I feel like, yes, of course, the online platforms are very important, but at the same time, the, 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 the sense of the community and the, 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 the interaction will always be needed for, for, for such discourse. I mean, I think that that's a, it's a it's an incredibly useful tool or roadmap that you've just given right there because it is very much about operating outside of oneself in the, in the, in the sense. Uh, I want to go back to the film because we we are we have some audience questions and if anyone has any questions, please uh, put them through your respective chat boxes and they'll be passed on. Um, and this, I, I suppose, is a question that um, maybe um, Tamer, you could begin with, but maybe Khaled could chime in about maybe a res a responsively. But uh, someone would like to know if you could speak to the use of sound and music in the film, which I, I, I would agree is a very kind of um, obviously important aspect to, to it. Yeah, I mean, there are many things to, you know, in, in general, I, I feel like the, um, as a filmmaker, like for me, sound is a, is a key element. You know, I always say like sounds is like the, the dots on the letters. So we, we, we need them to be able to read the letters and, and especially in Arabic, you know, dots are very important to be able to recognize each letter. And I feel like one thing that you know part of even how i think is how the sound is always changing the image in general people you know there is this hierarchy of locking the picture and then start to work on the sound and this creates a hierarchy that i am not sure is useful for the film of course technically it's not very easy to work on parallel on sound and image at the same time but this is actually what we what we did, and I'm very grateful to to my team and to everyone who worked on the sound and image in the post production of this film, who allowed, who created, who accepted to go through this uh, uh, horror uh, 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 situation with technology to be able to match the changes between the sound and image every time we work, but. I see that the result is, is so different because when you allow the sound to start to, to, to interact with the image in the post-production, you, 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 it's, it's like writing, you know? You start to write with these two elements together. You create a conversation between them. One thing, you know, I try to, to, to do is, you know, there was one sentence in the film is like, when the friend of Khaled is sending him this message saying, can you, listen to the, 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 the silence in the uh, noise of Cairo. And I always thought of the whole film as, as, as a search for this calmness and silence in the noise of Cairo. And that's why I think like the, the, the main idea is to use the noise of Cairo to create a, 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 a symphony, like a sound symphony based on the sounds of the city that is 
kind of um, um, as if we are retracing this search for the science. And um, just to say that everything you see in the film is designed like you know we we rebuilt the sound of the of the sound in the post uh, the, the sound of the city in the post production. Of course, okay. one big element is this kind of um, desync between sound and image in 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 some places in the film, and that was a way for me to 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 express, you know. I, I always felt like these scenes are kind of, it's as if someone is telling, is, 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 is retell some situations from his or her memory. You know, you don't remember things uh, in a chronological order, you more kind of, what stays in your memory is some glimpse and some moments. And I wanted to kind of multi-layer each moment when you bring sound, when you make sound, an image from a certain moment and and the sound from another moment uh, uh, inside the scene. Uh, I, I uh, want... What else? Music. We uh, we improvise the music. I, I I really wanted to pick up on this idea of silence as sound, and it's something that Khalida maybe you could comment on because in the character's constant search, the the, the there are these memory lapses, and. As a viewer, one of the feelings that I think it elicits is this kind of almost hermetic silent feeling, even if there is, even if there is non-diegetic sound on screen, whatever it may be, there is this feeling of being almost silenced in your own body. And I feel that that was something that watching the film, I watched the film again last night, late, late at night, I was felt so piercingly present and I don't know if you you want to talk about silence in terms of your own performance in terms of not using words but using using an emotion I mean, we live in the age of emotion I mean I was kind of you know like one of the things that's difficult about Ferid in, uh, as, a, as a character in film. You know, I, I think very, very often your main character in a film is someone who uh, an audience, some part of them wants to be. Uh, and very often that's part of what, you know, structures the, the speed and the, the plot nature of the film and, and you know, how you identify. I love him, uh, the character in the film. Um, but I think there's some part of him that is reflecting back a version of who you might be worried you are. Mm. Which is a very difficult place to be. And, uh, and, some, and in some ways, not always, in, in, very, in very simple terms, you know, not always what people go to the cinema for. Um, and part of, and, and to get political about it in a certain way also, I think it's some part of what people are in a kind of overwhelming world that is politically kind of like the disaster that is described in the film, you know, that sense of, that is alienating. And it very much puts you in the position of, although you want to engage, feeling like you're forced to be witness. And that can make, and, and that, that was a, a huge challenge as an actor in some ways, to on the one side occupy that place, but also uh, in terms of the film and the editing of the film, occupy the space that allows that particular form of, of witness reflected, I guess, through me, you know, through through the character, through the character that I play. Uh, it's not so much a silence as it is an openness. You know, I mean, for me, the experience of being in Cairo, and not just Cairo, it's the same in London, it's the same pretty much wherever I am in this kind of neoliberal present. I'm constantly witnessing things that I find unconscionable. 
but I have to pass by them. If I stop and engage with them, I don't know. Will I end up in prison? Will I end up being considered mad? Will I be, will I, will my day be destroyed? Right? And Cairo is a city, I think, in which a lot of those questions are very, very intense. Not just, not just that they're intense and visible. They're intense, visible, and they're also audible. You know, to go back to the whole question that, you know, when is there ever silence in Cairo? particularly well, you know and but, but but in a strange way to go back to the, the idea of witness as well that part of what makes it a very difficult city to film in also it's like on the you know it, 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 to witness Cairo is also to hear it you know and the gesture of listening anywhere amongst noise is is a very special one because actually if you listen deeply enough you can really hear it uh and 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 yeah I, you know taking that metaphor on i i you know i go back to I, I feel like the film was also an act of listening you know it was you know both in terms of what we like it's almost if you could imagine the camera having ears even take the sound out you know like that's kind of part of what it was doing um yeah i don't know that's my yeah, i mean it's interesting because when I when before when we were prepping and Tamar was in the room, I said, "Is it is it quiet in Cairo?" And he didn't know how to answer. <laughs> yeah. And and <laughs> because I mean, it's also interesting because Tamar is in the flat that's in the film at this moment that was constructed for the film, and I wondered, is, is that some kind of soundproof isolated box? Because I'm used to hearing. <laughs> And there are there actually well, you have no idea the troubles that we had in order to make this flat that there is in now like possible to film in. Anyway. I, I can only imagine because I mean there's there's a there's an artist who I've worked with who uh, did an entire project in 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 2013 I believe um, around basically kind of people losing their hearing capacities because of. Um, the noise, but the people who complain about the noise are the ones that actually generate the most noise. So then he kind of reveals these kind of layers of kind of contradiction and uh, indeed irony. And um, so that's something that I'm, um, I, I just wanted to hear it for a second. And you definitely hear it in the film, but there is that kind of dissonance between image and, and sound uh, in all these moments that but there's just one thing I want to say, though, is just like generally in terms of Egyptian cinema, really, we rarely hear Cairo. It's oh, not yeah. only that we see a version of Cairo that we don't recognize that isn't really like the one that's on the street. We rarely even hear it. Well, and for me, it's a tribute for everyone who worked on the film that those that, that was also, you know, possible. Don't you think that's an, a cinegraphic choice? Like, you know, if if you're uh, uh, I mean, I find it amazing that in uh, golden age of Egyptian cinema that, you know, you have these uh, romantic movies on the Nile, but you hear, you hear nothing of the din and noise around it. And what does that mean? What does that say about that period in the 40s, 50s and 60s? Or if you think of um, like, مثلاً, الكروان, like uh, Henry Barakat's like, like uh, um, I call them melodramas. They can be, you can call them Italian neorealism if you want. Um, you don't, you don't, they're set in, in the countryside, a lot of them. So they're not, you don't, you don't hear it. And it is indeed true that um, there is a set, there is a type of film which has been dubbed world cinema that includes a certain kind of Egyptian film that does allow the echo of the truth to kind of appear. And that's not, not, not spraying any negativity on, on what, what was passed, but it is something to be in that we are in constant search of, I think, um, as because we find ourselves in these films, uh, these films from the past as well that play. And um, I guess that this might lead to the next audience question. And we're, we're going to be wrapping up in about a couple of minutes. So if both of you also start thinking about any urgent things and any final audience question, but the, someone was reflecting on, you know, how cinema uh, you know it is one of the, the the cultural forms that is influenced by myriad uh 
reference cultural references and um, wanted to ask what else inspires you both in terms of kind of the materially whether it's visual art poetry um, theater etc what, what else in the cultural forms feed and fuel your work in cinema Khaled, you're, the, you're unmuted so you can answer first and then tell me okay uh, i was actually muted i feel this is one i feel like this is one for them and i mean um well, it's for both I mean, that's what I said. I'm, I'm actually, I, I, want, I actually, I want to hear Khaled. I'm, I'm looking forward to hear Khaled's answer. <laughs> so, please. I mean, God. I mean, I. I mean, in terms of in terms of influences, I mean, it's I mean, it's it's, it's everything and it's everywhere. I mean, I mean, I'm going to answer first from within the film, because from within the film. Uh, from within the film, we developed a language of something that we would be constantly, we, we could never exactly express. And it was somewhere on the intersection between a kind of politics, a kind of poetry, a kind of living, a kind of breath, uh, uh, and, certainly an, uh, and certainly an aesthetic value with a vast range of references that we developed as a kind of dance between us. You know, we would be in the city, we were filming in it for two and a half years, and there would be this moment when we would, we would like one of us would catch something and the other one was immediately like, yes, that is exactly the thing that we need to film. And we had this relationship between us uh, that could be, I don't know, it could be in a person passing, or it could be like one of my favorite shots, which is one of the earliest ones that we did, was like this one where I'm walking, and there's this way in which Cairo behind me kind of turns into this, like, I don't know, impressionistic series of, of, of colors. You know, it's part of attempting to, to capture its, its beauty. Um, but, on, but, but, on, but, but, but on another level, you know, I, I also feel like I'm living, I'm living in a period in which I, I need to have a politics. I feel like I have an identity. You know, one of the things that also even goes back to that 2000, 2008 moment, 2006, 2008 moment, we're talking about the height of the war in Iraq, we're talking about what was happening in Lebanon, we're talking about this massive, you know, like the thing that in some ways broke in 2011 and now God knows where we are now, you know, it's the region with one of the largest diasporas in the world, right? Um, I, I have to have a politics. And, and, I, and, I, and I attempt to find that, and I attempt to find that through cinema or through film in its various different forms. And that for me is what can sometimes put me in front of the camera and behind the camera at the same time as I was in this film. Sometimes that takes me to the barricades and it takes me into documentary. Other times that takes me into having to build spaces. Other times it's simply in the choices that I'm going to make as an actor, which I see as opportunities to then intervene in the bigger space of popular culture, you know, to also try and make other shifts. And in order to do that as an artist, as a person who is engaging in the world, I need the full range of references. I need poetry. I need everything that's come, you know, previously and, and is, is with me. Uh, it, you know, in the world of the visual arts, or, or you know, whatever it might, whatever it might be, music. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, completely. Which is why, fundamentally, I feel part of the community. You know, I feel part of the community. It's why I feel engaged with you, Omar. You know, I feel like in what you're doing, you know, what you're doing in your space is as an articulation of part of where I come from, but from in your space in terms of what you do in the world. And I feel like that connection is immediately recognizable and it's recognizable beyond our region. It's not just about, you know, wherever we might come from. It's also very clear as soon as you see it, I almost like, I almost feel like a, a certain shimmering in certain people that is part of a relationship with this person. And that, that shimmering is what I'm fighting for, it's what I'm looking for. And, and I don't care what form it takes. I want to follow that shimmer. 
So there we go, that's my answer. I wrote an essay once called Shimmering World, and I think that what you're suggesting is that a shimmering world would be quite magnificent, and that is what, I like that word a lot. I want to, I want to, to shimmer on my wall. Uh, we, uh, we have um, to wrap up in a second, and I wanted to ask Tamer, do, do, you, do you have any other things that are particularly pressing to you that you want to say? Do you want to respond to Khaled? Do you want to shout at him? Do you want to say, I miss you? Do you want to say, I, wanna, well, I wish we could? I think like... No, I think Khaled like Khaled like like really answered beautifully, and I can relate to everything he said for sure. I always see like filmmakers are um, too ambitious and they are too greedy. So you know they want to practice with many uh, form of arts, but maybe they they fail. You know. Every filmmaker, like for me, I wanted to be a musician, I wanted to be a dancer, I wanted to be a writer. And then I feel in cinema, I, in a way, I combine different forms. That's why I like it. I love the freedom um, that I have in cinema. One thing that I can also think of is in another life, maybe I I would love I I would choose to be an architect. But yeah, I feel also uh, architecture is something that gives me a lot of inspiration. Um, but yes, but I mean, I think um, it's very difficult to answer after Khalid. Like you know, he he said he beautifully said. Um, if I would just like add, it's, uh, it's just that, that that shimmering was just to go back to the first question that you asked about at meeting. That was what happened in that meeting. Absolutely. Like it was that feeling of, of a future, you know, of, of some point of departure, some thing that was there. And uh, yeah. So are you, are, you, are you guys thinking that you would work on another film again that might take 10 to 12 years or 20 next year? I mean, Khaled is always, Khaled is always, and forever is always my, the, my, the, 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 um, I always think of him and I always like, you know, he's always on the top of my, uh, key partners and we're still working together on many projects i also i can't wait for him to make his film uh i don't think he will cast me anyway so <laughs> i'm not sure that i have a chance there you never know maybe a walk on but uh yes <laughs> well i just wanted to say to both of you thank you so much for taking the time um well, actually, first, for allowing us the privilege to show your film, um, which is a beautiful film. It can be at times harrowing for certain people, such as myself, um, but it, it's in its piercing qualities, it unearths feelings that may otherwise be left unturned, and that is, the, I believe, a sign of an incredibly powerful cinema, a thoughtful cinema, a, a measured cinema, a, a lived cinema. And so thank you for that and for both of you for taking the time. I'm glad that you two get to see each other. I hope that you two will talk more amongst each other afterwards. And it was, it's very beautiful to, to be able to step just a little closer to this intimate journey that, that included not only both of you, but a, a wonderful group of people that I've heard so much about. And so thank you both, Khaled Abdullah, Tamir Saeed, um, for joining. And Omar Khalif, thank you. <laughs> thank you. And to our audience, thank you very much for joining us over the last four days so and to this evening. And we wish you all, what it, was it they say? Good luck and good night, right? So good luck <laughs> and good night. And bye-bye.